I want you to raise your voice and begin to pray someone. Come on, open up your mouth and worship him. Father, we worship you this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we raise our voices unto you, O oh God. And Lord, Father, we say, Lord, Father, may you take your blessing in our hearts. Lord, rise up in our hearts this morning. Father, take your blessing in our hearts right now. Rise in this place, O God. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands, put your hands, put your hands together. Hallelujah. If it wasn't of Jesus, we wouldn't be here. I want you once again to put your hands together for the Lord of Lords, our Christ, the Rock of Ages. Hallelujah. Praise be unto Jesus. So God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And he knew very well that today, uh, knew very well that this morning we were going to congregate in a manner like this. And he said it before time that you and I would congregate like this so that we may obtain the blessing. Because he gave us an assurance that if we gather like this, he commanded the blessing. Not only that, God remembered you. God thought of you. And he raised a man for you and I. He raised a man for you and I. So that today you may obtain your healing. So that today you may obtain your mercy. So that today you may get, go home with your deliverance. When we are talking about deliverance, you have to understand that it's different from demon casting. Hallelujah. Deliverance is whereby God takes you from one place to another. But we know that God uses man. And I want you to know that this morning God has remembered you. He ordained someone and he gave someone an assignment that he should go into the holy of holies for you and I. The man of God was in the holy of holies. He was inquiring from the Lord so that you and I may go home with a word from the Lord. You have to understand that the man of God hears from God. He would not summon a meeting like this unless he had heard from the Lord. And I want you to believe it in your heart that tonight is tonight. Hallelujah. And that the man of God is on assignment. Remember, he said that this is a night of mantles. Mantles are going to be uh, given to us. But I also want you to understand that he himself is a mantle that God has given us this morning. Church of God, I want you to raise your faith up. I want you to pull from him this morning so that you may receive from him. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the grace of this house of Apostle Cecil Stevenson. Come on, come on, come on. You can do better than that. Pull from the grace. Draw from him. Come on, somebody, give Jesus a mighty hand. Amen. We're jumping and hollering in this place, but I think we can do better for Jesus. Can we give unto Jesus a shout of praise in this place? Come on to Jesus! Whoa! Yes! Amen. I 
want you to put your hands together for the melodious choir who have been doing so well for us. Look at your neighbor and tell them I'm still better than you. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the other one and say you're looking good tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's nice to be here. I said it's nice to be here. Sakana Kakovapano. It's all about Jesus, you know. All the glamour, all the lights, everything. It's all about Jesus. Amen. It was a fight for you to be in this place. But I want you to know it was a divine appointment for you. Amen. It's not by accident that you are in this place. Amen. So I want you to raise your faith. Amen. I want you to open your heart. As the man of God is going to speak to you this morning, say, oh God, I'm here for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you expecting this morning? We are the chosen generation. A noble. We are the ecclesia. Yes, this is the gathering of nobles. Amen. Hallelujah. How good it is when brethren come together. How good it is when you and I come together. My God, I believe God is up to something. I believe God has something for you this morning. I'm not here to preach, but I'm here to just say you are welcome and God has a word for you. Amen. Hmm. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and all. And the day of our God's vengeance to comfort all women. I did not know that vengeance is comforting. Are we reading the same Bible? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort those women. It means we need the vengeance of the Lord to be comforted. Am I talking to someone who's going through something? We need God tonight. We will put the devil in his place. We will declare vengeance so that we may be comforted. And then he says to provide for those who mourn in Zion. Do, do you know the, the word Zion? is used for the city of Jerusalem. So, it's Jerusalem when we are going there to do business. But it's Zion when we are going to worship God and fellowship with God. So, Jerusalem and Zion is the same place. Zion is the spiritual name for Jerusalem. 
So when he says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, it means there was mourning in the place of worship. There was some people who, there were some people who had troubles and yet they were in church and in the house of God. Mm, is there any morning this morning in Zion? <laughs> to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Uh, watch this. To give unto them beautiful ashes and the oil and the oil of joy <laughs> for mourning. Hmm. It's beautiful ashes. It's oil of joy for mourning. But then he says, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hmm. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Ah, that they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. And the songwriter says, all I want is for you to be lifted and for you to be glorified. How many people want their lives to reflect? Mm. Now, if you go to the, to the other version, which version am I using here? Uh, I'm using the, which one am I? I'm using the CSB. Can I have the CSB version? If you don't have it, I will read from here. It says, to provide, verse 3, for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, festive oil instead of mourning, uh, and splendid clothes instead of despair. Another version is, calls it a mantle. A mantle, the mantle of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hmm. The CSB calls it the mantle of praise. The Hebrew word there is mate, mate, M A. A T E. That's the word that is translated mantle or garment. Are we together? Then it says the mantle of praise. And the word praise there is the word tajila. T H A, right? T H I double L A. Tajila. And I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to the meaning of that word because it's going to change our whole understanding of that scripture. Tell your neighbor, hold on a second. We are going to come back and deal with some real issues there. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if you go to the Amplified, it says to grant those who mourn in Zion the following, to give them a turban instead of dust on their heads, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment expressive of praise instead of a disheartened spirit so that they'll be called the trees of righteousness 
strong, magnificent, distinguished for integrity, justice, and right standing with God. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Amen. I don't know why my spirit keeps hovering on this portion of scripture, but I'm going to be back at it in a minute. Amen. Lift up your hand, your right hand. Say, I receive understanding this morning. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Now, I'm going to journey with you through the Bible, and I'm going to speak on the subject, pick up your mantle. Pick up your mantle. And uh, I'm going to subtitle this message, The Lost Mantle. The Lost Mantle. I believe we are in a season where God is releasing mantles in the church. There is a transition that's taking place from one generation of revivalists into a new generation of revivalists. So you are going to see within the next decade the emerging of spiritual voices that have been in obscurity that God is calling out to the place of light so that they can cause in our world and in our terms as a church a revival. And we are believing God as this church and I myself as a man of God that we are going to be picking mantles. So whenever you see a generation of torch bearers of the word in a season, whenever the, the, the torch is being passed, it's passed through the process of mantles. I need you to know this, um, and I think a lot was defined about mantle. So my responsibility here is not to define the mantle, but is to get deep in a revelatory expression that gives you understanding of what God is doing in this place. So we are going to pick our mantle, but just to add or to confirm what has been said, number one, a mantle is a covering. A mantle is a covering. The purpose of a mantle is to give a covering. Is to give a covering. Number two, a mantle is divine authority. A mantle is divine authority. Whenever God is giving authority to a person, he gives him a mantle. So your mantle is your divine authority. Your mantle is your credentials of authority. In Shona, it's the nyembe on your armor. These are the credentials. This is the legal, the legal right to exercise power. Then your mantle is, your mantle is your armor. Whenever God gives a mantle, the mantle acts as an armor for that person. That is why you must never do things that you do not have a mantle for. Because those that have a mantle for ministry, the mantle will defend them even when they are wrong. Now, the mantle is a room for gifts and the gifted. The mantle is a room for gifts and the gifted. And... We are now on number five, is it? The mantle is a right for an open heaven. The mantle is a right for an open heaven. When a person walks in with a mantle, they have the ability to open heaven. An open heaven is when you have terrestrial, celestial beings, right, interacting with us. This is where you have angels coming up and down. Elijah laid his hand at Peniel and he begins to see a ladder ascending and descending. That was an open heaven. Everyone say open heaven. So when someone has a mantle, they are able to operate their lives with an open heaven. Not everyone has an open heaven and not every place has an open heaven. 
uh, not every person has the ability to plant heavens. Uh, planting heavens is an apostolic mandate that is um, enabled by the apostolic mantle. Then number six, a mantle is an atmosphere. Whenever a person has a mantle, they carry an atmosphere and at times they become the atmosphere. I hope that's making sense. And then the lastly, the, the, a mantle is in, in political terms a diplomatic immunity. When a person has a mantle, they become immune. They become immune to diabolical attacks. They become immune to certain precepts and judgments. Certain precepts and judgment. Can I give examples of these? Number one, a mantle is a covering. When a person is a carrier of a mantle, they provide covering for others. They provide covering. The Bible says when Adam and Eve had fallen in the garden, God made a, a slaughtered an animal and he covered them. He covered them. So when a person has a mantle, they are covered from demonic negative activity happening in the realm of the spirit. That's number one. And number two, a covering covers their nakedness. A mantle protects uh, and as a covering, it acts as a qualifier. Um, uh, or, um, or can I put it across? It acts as a shield of protection to their giftedness by working with their character. And that's what we mean by covering. And it then covers other people. Ladies and gentlemen, the realm of the spirit is very real. If you are not under a covering, you will be exposed. There are certain spirits that attack people because they are out of their covering. You always have to be under your covering. And sometimes you may underestimate covering because you don't know the kind of battles that are being fought on your behalf by reason of a mantle. I know right here in this place there are people who are supposed to be dead. But just because they have walked and sat under the umbrella of this apostolic mantle, they become covered. They become protected. And when the storms and the rains start coming down, they are exempted. Somebody say amen. amen. So you can look at that example. Number two, a mantle is divine authority. When Elijah came in chapter 17 of the book of First Kings, he came and says, God tell the king that as per my word, I'm shutting the heavens. Yeah, that's divine authority. He did not say God is saying. He said, as per my word. Now, when you look at the word authority, Jesus says, if you go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. But before he ascended into the heavens, there's something that he says that I want you to take note of. He said, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Now go ye therefore. He's saying, I've picked the mantle of authority. I now have the authority. Now go ye therefore. Now go and do. Because now the mantle is available. Now, the word power and the word authority in scripture are different. The word power in chapter 1 verse 8 is the Greek word dunamis. But the word authority in the book of Matthew chapter 28, I hope I'm not mistaken, is the word exousia. And exousia means authority. And dunamis means power. There's a difference between authority and power. So we may all become powerful because of the intensity we are generating in prayer and fasting and because of our giftedness. 
But when it comes to authority, which is, which is related to mantles, authority is exousia. Authority is the ability and the license to delegate power. So whenever authority is given to someone, it means legally, be it spiritually or naturally, they start carrying access and control. It means the power is now subject to them. That's what it means to have authority. It means power is subject to you. And that's another level of God entrusting you. Now, when you look at authority, there are different kinds of authority. I've covered it before. But you have delegated authority. Authority that you have because you're on assignment with God. Number two, you have hierarchical authority. Uh, this is authority that is based on your spiritual rank. Right? You have sovereign authority. And this is the unchallenged, unquestioned authority of God. Then you have authority that comes from knowledge. What you do not know will kill you. Ignorance cannot defend you against anything. And when you know something, you gain authority in the field of knowledge. When you become a PhD in, 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 in academic terms, they are saying you have become an authority. Everybody else writes based on the opinion of others. But when you become a PhD, your opinions are respected, are documented, and they are studied. So knowledge gives power. Somebody say, I receive knowledge. That's why the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Am I talking to some people? Am I talking to some people here? Am I talking to some people here? So there is different levels of authority I can talk about, but that's related to the mantle. Then the mantle is an armor, is an armor, is an armor. A mantle is a protection. When Saul wanted to, when Goliath challenged Israel, remember the day that Saul was made king, it was acknowledged that he was the tallest man who stood shoulders above everybody else. Are you listening to me? And now when Goliath was challenging Israel, it meant that that was Saul's battle. Amen. You are the biggest in Israel, but can you face Goliath is bigger than you. But all the kings knew that we have to wear an armor. That's why the Bible says, put on the whole armor so that you are able to fight. Now, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. And therefore, we need to put on the armor, the armor, the armor. So, a mantle is an armor. It is your equipment that you take when you are fighting battles that come in your assignment. Then, the, the mantle is a room. For gifts is a room for gifts. The Bible says, Are you following me, church? I feel like I'm losing you. Are you following me? Or oh, you're, you're too serious? Is it because you're listening to me? Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Amen. Right. A mantle is a room for gifts and the gifted. Whenever you see a mantle, a mantle is a room for the gifted. The Bible says it is the gift of a man that maketh room for him to stand before great men. It means when a gift comes in submission to a mantle, it then comes into greatness. So greatness is found in a room. It's not found in a gift. The gift maketh room. The gift comes into a room. Mm -hmm. So you come into a room of great people and you present your gift. You come into a room of those with mantles and you present your gift. You become useful to those with a mantle. Let me show you this. The Bible says of Elijah, God says to him, anoint 
Hazael to be king of Assyria. Anoint Jehu to be king over Judah. Then God says, anoint Elisha to be a prophet in your room. Or anoint Elisha in your room. So, when he gives him the mantle, he's introducing his gift into the office of that mantle. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Now, you then get a mantle is causes an open heaven. When a person has a mantle, they become an open heaven. The Bible says when Seth was born, the Bible says, and all men began to worship God. Because now you had a person who had a mantle that had come on the scene. I hope you're following what I'm saying here. There are people who come into a space and an atmosphere and things begin to happen. Angels start moving because they themselves are in atmosphere. So that's open heaven, that's atmospheres, right? And then next is immunity. Everybody say immunity. Here in the Bible, you have Miriam and Aaron coming against Moses. Moses gave commandments, and one of the laws that he gave was the children of Israel were not supposed to intermarry. They would not intermarry. But here comes Moses with an African queen. Are you, are you hearing me? With a dark, gorgeous black woman. And Miriam and Aaron say, what, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? Why are you saying that we mustn't? And here you are. Have I lost you? I'm trying to bring you into the message. Amen. And, 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 and it so happens that God then intervenes and says to them, you, can, you have no right to question Moses because of ranking in the spirit. You may be right on your level, but you can't speak even about him like that. Even to him like that. Because you are not on the same level with him. And that's one thing the church has got to learn. When Michael fought against, against Lucifer and his angels, he always said, Satan, may God rebuke you. Because angelic beings understand rank. But human beings, oh my God. They will do anything. They will say anything without acknowledging rank in the spirit. Your life would have been better if you learned how to shut your mouth and put your mind under control and tell yourself that there are people that you don't pour it hands at. And there are people that you don't speak to in a pervasive way. You need to control yourself in the presence of rank. Or you live out there with a case that no other person except the initiator can take away. So God is introducing this concept to Miriam and Aaron. And the Bible says immediately Miriam had leprosy. But watch what happens. Aaron did not have leprosy at that moment because Aaron wore the priestly garment. So the garment, the, 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 the mantle that he had provided in that space immunity against a curse. When somebody has a mantle, don't imitate them. They have immunity from things that you have no immunity from. Story for another day. So these are the functions of a mantle on top of what has already been introduced by the pastors who stood here to share the word of God. And I'm going to continue from there. And now I want you to pick up your mantle. Somebody say, I'm going to pick up my mantle. Somebody say, I'm going to pick up my mantle. The pastor said that there are different kinds of mantles that are available for us to pick up. There are mantles for business. And I believe somebody here, you're going to pick a business mantle. You can't just go and do business without an anointing. Somebody is a poor under their table. 
When you go and open your own temple, you have to make sure you have a mantle that gives you covering, that gives you immunity against those that fight with the progress of your own business. Am I making sense this morning? Am I making sense this morning? When you are going to do the work of ministry, you need an armor. You're going to be casting out devils after the service. They'll be waiting for you at your door at home. You better make sure you have an armor on you always. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? If God is assigning you to places to take his gospel and his kingdom, when you get into that space, when you get into that territory, you need to make sure that you have a covering on you. You need to make sure that there's something that is protecting you from the enemy. But more so, you need to be opening heavens in spaces where people don't even know nothing about Jesus. And for you to be able to do that, you need a mantle that gets into Bushu Shamba. And when you get there, an open heaven comes. Witches and weak doctors can't tell what's happening because a person with a mantle has walked into the room. Ladies and gentlemen, I came here to tell you that it's time for you to pick up your mantle. You are too gifted to be mantleless. You are too gifted to be walking naked. Your ideas have to be clothed and shrouded in the power of God. Is somebody say amen in this place? Somebody shout amen in this place. Hallelujah. Now let's take a journey here and it's going to be an interesting journey. Somebody say an interesting journey. It's not where I'm going to finish, but it's where I'm going to start now. Because where I'm going to start is going to be a bit of a he. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But lift up your hands, say, I receive understanding. Somebody say, I receive understanding. You better hold that for a moment. We have, we have some work to do. Hallelujah. 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 Now, from where we read in the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter, from verse 3, the Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Mm -hmm. To appoint unto them that have problems, but they are in the house of God. To appoint to them that are facing a divorce, but they are in the house of God. Uh, to them that are struggling with school fees, but they are in the house of God. To them that are struggling to buy a house, but they are in the house of God. To them that are sick, but they are in the house of God. To them that are broke, but they are in the house of God. Are you getting what I'm saying, church? I don't know what your problem is. But when I look at you, I can see there is some mourning that's taking place. And Are you listening to what I'm saying here, church? I don't care who seated next to you and how beautiful they are looking or how ugly they are. Don't be scared of them. They have some problems. There's some kind of mourning that's taking place. The paradox here is that those who are mourning are mourning in the presence of God. The paradox is the paradox is those who are praying and fasting are those who are under attack. The paradox is the more that I pray, the more that I serve God, the more that I look attacked. The, uh, am I talking to real people here? Am I talking to real people here? That say there's no all night that I have not attended. There's no prayer meeting that I've not been present. There's no giving that I've not done. But why am I mourning when I'm in Zion? 
And Isaiah here is presenting to us what the Lord is saying. He's saying to you who are mourning in Zion, to you who have tears on your cheeks and yet you are in Zion, to you who have tears that no one can see, to you who is heartbroken but you love the Lord and you still serve him nonetheless, to you who has a lot of prophetic words spoken over your life but nothing seems to be moving or coming to pass. You are the person that God has sent me to this morning. You are the person that I'm assigned to this morning. And God is saying to you, He is appointing unto you that mourn in Zion, that He is giving you beauty for ashes. In the Old Testament, they wore ashes as a sign of mourning. The Lord is saying, I'm giving you beauty beauty for ashes where you have been crying I'm wiping your tears baby we are putting some mascara we are putting some face powder we are filling those portholes we are giving you beauty am I talking to some people in this place am I talking to some people in this place may God give your life beauty for ashes you may be mourning for your marriage. You may be mourning for your ministry. You may be mourning for your gift. But God is beautifying and is turning the mess into a message. He is turning your tears into a victory. Beautiful ashes. Number two, he says the oil of joy for mourning. There's an anointing of joy. For your morning, where you were crying, the Spirit of God anoints you for joy. He enables you to rejoice. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? Then he says, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is somebody here? Is somebody here? The garment of praise, the mantle of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, here is the problem that we have in understanding this scripture. In teaching this scripture, we have taught that the mate is of praise, but the mate is of tahila. The, the, the mantle is of praise. Now, it does not mean that when you get this mantle, what we have been taught is that God is giving me the ability to praise him. No, that's not what the scripture is saying. The garment of praise or the mantle of praise has nothing to do with what you will be doing. This has everything to do with what is being done to you. So, the garment of praise, you don't wear it so that you praise God. But you wear the garment of praise so that men praise you. So, when the Bible says the garment of praise for heaviness, it's saying God is putting influence in your life. It means God is elevating you. He's making you attractive. He's giving you favor. He's making you praiseworthy. That's what it means when the Bible says God will give you a garment of praise. God has his own garment that Isaiah saw in Isaiah chapter 6. When he puts on that garment, it fills the tents. The skirt of that garment fills the whole the whole tabernacle and the whole temple and the angels shout holy, holy, holy. They are responding to his garment. But the garment of praise is your garment that's making you praiseworthy. So many of you have been despised for too long. You are too gifted but despised. You are too gifted but neglected. You are too educated but jobless. You are operating below your level. That in itself creates some heaviness and sorrow. There's nothing that is as sorrowful as knowing that my life I'm living below my capacity and below my level. Look at your neighbor. That looks like someone who really knows what they're worth. 
But here is what God does with you. When people don't respect you, don't see what is in you, what God will do is he will come to you and give you a mantle that causes men to look at you and praise you, to look at you and acknowledge the very things that were always there, but nobody cared to pay attention. Somebody here, God is clothing you with a garment of praise. You are becoming praiseworthy. We rebuke the garment of rejection. We remove the garment of heaviness. But we put on your life a garment of influence. A garment of influence. A garment of favor. So that when people see you, they favor you. So that when people see you doing your business, they can't help it but acknowledge it. There's nothing as painful as working so hard, but you have nothing to show for it. Because the world can't pay attention to how good you are at what you do. But the Lord has sent me to someone this morning that now, tonight, at this night of glory, you have come to the best dressmaker of all time. You have come to the best tailor of all time. And there is a garment of praise that's coming into your spirits. God has measured you. He knows what you're worth. He knows what he has invested in your spirit. And he has sent me this morning to let you know that when you leave this place, you are not living naked as you've been, but you are living with the garment of praise. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We have been praising God because we know who he is. But the garment of praise has everything to do with how we are perceived, how we are appreciated, the kind of seats where we sit, the kind of rooms that we enter, the kind of cars that we drive, the kind of houses that we live in. May God release into your spirit the Come on! Come on, somebody. Pray in tongues in this moment and grab the garment of praise. It's here in the atmosphere. Just in the next two minutes. Restondes ke de berelepa. Tahi loro sanda malanda maso de de beha. I put a seed in my hand, O Jehovah. I saw for my garment of praise. No one shall take credit anymore for the good work that I do. I refuse to be used and abused. I refuse to be rejected. I refuse to be played left, right, and center. From now on, my life, where is the garment of praise? My ministry, where is the garment of praise? My giftedness, where is the garment of praise? Your countenance is changing. Beautiful ashes. Rasta le monda la tiba bahaya. Sondes ke deba rosta li di biya kandasa. Oh God. Oh God. Woo. 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 I feel it in this place. I feel the anointing of the Lord. Be seated. Be seated, but prayerfully be seated. As I'm preaching tonight, be in prayer. Ah, the garments are falling. Let me tell you something that I saw before this all night, before we even declared it. In my spirit, I perceived a vision. And it so happened that I saw a cloth coming from the heavens. And as it came down, it was changing colors, purple, pink, yellow. But when it hit the ground, the Lord says to me, pick up, pick up that cloth. When I picked it, it sunk into my skin on my right hand. And the Lord says, you picked up the mantle. So I'm not 
preaching out of excitement. I am preaching what I know is happening. And God wants someone this morning to pick up their mantle. God wants you to pick up your mantle. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Elijah said to Elijah, if you see me going, then you're going to have it. Then when he saw Elijah going, he cried, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. The Bible says, and then he saw the mantle of Elijah coming down. And Elijah did not grab the mantle there and then. He didn't grab it in thin air. The mantle hit the ground. When the mantle hit the ground, that's when he picked the mantle. That's why I'm saying to somebody here, pick up your mantle. Pick up your mantle. Pick up your mantle. In Jesus' mighty name. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you want God to move in your life. I know you want God to change the trajectory of your life. And I'm giving you the ingredient that the Lord has set aside even in this place for you. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Akuna rombera Jesu, akuna, akuna. Uta repasa ya pagote. Akuna rombera Jesu, akuna, akuna. Paono buda pana pa kemenzi le urombe. Unenga wa visa. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Nati pa uno buda pana pa unenga wa visa kemenzi le urombe. Kana wato tsuka seni mawane. Akuna rombe tsuku, akuna. Akuna ramba. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Akuna. Uta pasa ni pagote. Akuna shakadaro. Uzat maksenana ya. Andi bude nakadaro. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Now tell your neighbor we are about to go deeper. It's about to get hot in this room. I feel the anointing of the Lord in this place. Now, there are mantles that I'm going to start talking about that God gave. Uh, the first mantle is called the mantle of God's glory. The mantle of God's glory. Lift up your right hand and say, I receive the mantle of God's glory. You need to understand that in the original intent of God, the glory of God was supposed to be the mantle that man put in his life, that man would always wear in order to stay in the place of God's presence. The book of Genesis says God planted a garden eastward of Eden. When man sinned, he realized that he was naked. He realized that he was what? Naked. Ah, he did not realize that he was naked. He actually became naked and recognized his nakedness because he wasn't dressed with linen. Neither was he dressed with animal skin. But God had clothed men with glory. That's why the Bible says, For all men have sinned and they have fallen short of what? The glory of God. It means men became too small for the garment called God's glory. That's why God says without the garment of glory, you are not worth in my presence. Mm, but I heard Isaiah say later in the day, the glory of the Lord shall fill the earth as the waters shall cover seas. It means the mantle of God's glory shall be available after Jesus. That's why we believe that we are clothed in the glory of God. We are going to wear glory like a garment. When you look at me, you're going to see the glory. You're going to experience the heaviness of God. Because glory is a garment. Hallelujah. So the first mantle is the mantle of God's glory. The mantle of glory. The mantle of glory. This is the mantle that allowed men to fellowship with God. This is the mantle that allowed men to live with animals and never saw him as prey. 
This is the mantle that allowed Adam to operate like God. He was similar to God in how the world felt his presence. That's why the Bible says when men sinned, creation became subjected to futility and corruption. And Romans 8 says, ever since then, creation eagerly awaits for the manifestation of the sons of God. But when John said, brethren, now are we the sons of God, he was letting you and I know that we are now shrouded in the garment of glory. Then hear what I said, you get me later on. Then God in the book of Genesis when men fell short of the garment of glory and was moved out of the garden when God saw and men realized that he was naked. The Bible says God sacrificed one of the animals and when he did that, are you listening to me church? Are you listening to me church? Are we walking together here? When God saw that man had become naked, he kills one of the animals and he clothes him with a garment. He clothes him with a garment. And that is the first mantle to men after the fall of men. The purpose of that mantle was to retain men to his position despite the challenges that he was going to face. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a difference between a garment that has been sewn by the tailor and a garment that has been sewn by God. Now, because we read the Bible in a very, very historical way, there are things that we start to miss in the Bible, but they are there and looking at us. In the book of Exodus, you hear the mention of a book called the book of Joshua or the book of Joshua. Somebody say Joshua. There's a very interesting story in the book of Joshua that I'm going to speak here. So if I say anything that you don't know, I've already given you reference to that. And it's mentioned in the Bible. So now this is what happens when God, are you following me? Do you need me to give you time? No, I can continue. Praise God. They said I can continue. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, church? Can you hear me, church? Can you hear me, church? Now, when you get into, into that understanding of mantles, you then understand that if what... Adam wore was sown by God. It wasn't for the purpose of just clothing because we don't hear any other time that he changed his clothes or made other clothes because a garment that God has made is not an ordinary garment. When God becomes your tailor, it becomes supernatural. What that means is the mandate of men was not taken away. What was taken was the glory that clothed men. So God made a mantle that kept men in, 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 in alignment with his assignment despite the curses that men had adopted. Are you following what I'm saying? And what was men's purpose, God said of everything that he created, he said, it is good. When he came to man, he says, the Bible says, and he blessed man and said, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. In other words, have dominion on the earth. So when God gives Adam that mantle, Adam and Eve, they were clothed with the mantle of dominion. That's why men remained in dominion even when he had been demoted from the level of the mantle of glory. Then God made a substitute for that mantle and he clothed him with himself with that mantle. Now, this is what you will not find in the book of Genesis. The bar, in, the, in the biblical text of Jashe, which is spoken about in Exodus, we record that 
that the garments which Adam wore were moved from Adam. You get it? This and Adam, after his death and his wife, these are the garments that were given to Enoch. That's why the Bible says, and Enoch walked with God and was no more. As Adam walked with God in the cool of the day in the garden, such was the level that Enoch walked because of the mantle of his great-grandfather Abraham. Now, when Enoch was taken up by God, Enoch knew that God was going to take him. And he gathers men and he speaks to them and says, God is going to take me and I'm going to go. I'm going to go with God. That was announced. And certain men tried to follow him as the sons of prophet did to Elijah. But when he was taken, none of them could witness the spectacle of what God did. But Enoch left the mantle to Methuselah. Now, when Methuselah died, Methuselah leaves the mantle to Noah. That's why chapter 6 says, And Noah found favor in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. He found favor in the sight of God. And that had to do with the Adamic mantle, the mantle of dominion. Wait a minute. How do you think one man is taught by God that you are going to, to build an ark? And you are going to pay animals two by two. And you are going to put them in the ark. For days and weeks it's going to be raining. How is this man managing that? How is he able to summon the animals? How is he able to say the Egyptian cobra? And the African black mamba. Come here. Husband and wife. Egyptian cobra, Egyptian queen. How is he able to do that? They had to be a supernatural power that made him stand and command animals to present themselves two by two. Are you seeing what's happening here? Are you seeing what? <laughs> Are you seeing what's happening here? So this had to be supernatural. So from Enoch, the next supernatural man is Noah. Don't joke with the man who preaches the same message for 120 years. Noah preached for 120 years. One message. Come into the ark. Pastor, if you say God is coming this year, you say again tomorrow, your miracle is around the corner. Next year, you say that your miracle, I'm going to ask you to show me the corner. Are you listening to me? So that I go and grab my miracle. But imagine for 120 years, a man preached the same message. What gave him that ability? The mantle. The mantle. He, be, he had dominion over the birds of the air. He had dominion over the fish of the sea. He had dominion over the animals that moved in the ground. He had dominion. The man would send a raven. Would say, go and check. If, there, if there's no rain, you call, you call back. If there's no rain, disappear. If he had them two by two. How is it that? That if one went, how are they going to find each other? Imagine, imagine, imagine the, 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 the Gabon Viper and the King Cobra listening to you. You have to be a god. The elephants were in one compartment. All these animals could be hungry. How did he contain them? And the predators were not feeding on their prey. There was no grass to eat. And yet they all remained alive. Don't joke with the men who found favor in the eyes of God. The Bible says, and Noah found favor. 
Because the grandson of Adam had picked up the mantle. Am I talking to some people here? Can I take it a little bit further? This man then called Noah had three sons. Of his three sons, there was Shem, there was Ham, and there was Japheth. The man got drunk out of stress. No one hears that is those levels of stress, so don't get any ideas. <laughs> he drank, and after drinking, he became unconscious of what he was doing. The Bible says, and Noah was in his tent. Then one of his sons called Ham came. And the Bible says, and he saw his father's nakedness. Now oh, here is the problem. I don't think these are the only guys to see anyone naked. But what was so different about him seeing his father's nakedness? He saw his father without the mantle. So he's called his brother, says, come and see the father. They refused to see him without the mantle. Because without the mantle, he would age. Without the mantle, the glory of God would not be visible. The Bible says when Noah woke up, he knew what had been done to him. The son saw his father's nakedness. What is the Bible talking about? That he knew what had been done to him. This is why Noah cursed Ham. He didn't curse him because he saw him naked. He cursed him because Ham took the coat, took Adam's garments, and he hid them in a cave. So when Noah woke up, he woke up without the garments, without the mantle. And he could not find the mantle, but he knew who took the mantle. Now, after Ham hid it, he is released a curse. But Ham is a firstborn. And the firstborn of Ham is called Cush. Now, Ham gives the, the, the mantle to Cush's son. Grandson, whose name was Nimrod. The Bible says, and Nimrod became mighty and strong. And all the people listened to him. The same thing that was happening with Enoch was now happening with Nimrod. The man says, we will build a tower that gets to heaven. Let's pause there. We, we all know geography. That you are on earth. There is the atmosphere. There is the stratosphere. There is the mesosphere. Out of the earth you get into the galaxies. And you get to see different planets. And the sun is, I don't know how many light years away from the earth. Scientifically you cannot build a tower to heaven. But the God of heaven said these men are united and I God cannot stop them. Do you think it was just unity? Let's all agree to do something here. And say we are united. Let's go and fight America. Let's, let's agree to do that. Do you think we can defeat them by virtue of being united? I know we celebrate unity day but ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there are powers that be. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? This was a spiritual kind of unity. This was a spiritual kind of summoning. And God split their languages. How, why did God split their languages? So that they could not hear each other. And the tower was left alone. And to this day, if you go there, they will tell you there is a problem. Do you know what this man wanted to do? This is how God revealed it to me. Later on, that place where he was building a tower was later called Babel. And later on, it was called Babylon. And Babylon means the gates of the gods. What Nimrod did is 
by <laughs> by the garment he found the place where angels were thrown from heaven to the earth and he wanted to build through that portal the men discovered a spiritual portal a back door into heaven without Jesus dying on the cross don't joke with Nimrod man are you listening to what I'm saying? But can I tell you something, ladies and gentlemen? When Nimrod died, the mantle was hidden. And the mantle has never been found. That's why I told you the title of my message is the lost mantle. It's the lost mantle. The mantle of dominion. Oh, I declare in your life that you are going to wear a mantle that causes men to listen to you. You are going to put on a mantle that even God who said, whatever this one wants to do cannot fail. The Bible says you shall have dominion. You shall have dominion. I release on your life the mantle of dominion. Whatever field of expertise, whatever line of business and calling, may God usher you with the mantle of dominion. When you get into a space, get in there and dominate. Somebody shout dominion. Again, somebody shout dominion. Somebody shout dominion. Say, I have dominion. I have mastery. I am a master within my jurisdiction. I have influence in the kingdom of God. Say, I am a master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated. We have some work to do. <laughs> so the mantle was lost. <laughs> Somebody say the lost mantle. <laughs> the lost mantle. And today we are going to get uh, the lost mantle back into the church. We are going to walk in dominion. We are going to walk in supernatural provision. We shall have dominion. Oh my God. Number two is the mantle of social, economic, and geopolitical influence. The mantle of social, economic, and geopolitics. Now, from the mantle of dominion, the next time you find a mantle is on a man called Joseph. The Bible speaks that Shem had a grandson whose name was Abraham. Abraham, which later God changed to Abraham. And this beautiful man called Abraham, God makes a covenant with him. And he says, I will, in chapter 12 of Genesis, I will make your name great. And he says, through you shall all the nations be blessed. And God releases a wonderful blessing on Abraham. Now, Abraham is a son called Isaac. And Isaac is a son called Jacob. And the three of them, they represent the mantle of covenant. The mantle of covenant. The mantle of covenant. Remember what God said when Melchizedek came to Abraham. He says, O oh, Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. Possessor of heaven and earth. So we know that the covenant that Abraham had with God was a covenant of possessing the heavens and the earth. So he was a possessor of heaven and the earth. When he leaves, he leaves his son Isaac who's called the son of promise. And then Isaac releases the blessing on Jacob who became Israel. Somebody say amen. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, there is something that God is brewing. A mantle is being proved. Because now God takes us from the Adamic mantle into the Abrahamic mantle. But the Abrahamic mantle is transgenerational and has to be carried by three patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
Now all Israel, when they prayed, they prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they had received for themselves a supernatural mantle that was tripartite. Now, the one to hand over the mantle, who is Jacob, prophetically begins to speak to his sons at the end of Genesis, around 38th chapter. He begins to lay out the order of God, prophesying that the, the, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. The Levites shall serve God. And he begins to distribute the inheritance of that mantle into 12 sons. And 12 is the number of covenant. Their mantle was the mantle of covenant. But this is what God does. Not all the 12 sons can carry the mantle of their father. So God shuts the womb of Rachel so that for years we have ten sons of Leah and the concubines. Then we have two sons that belong to Leah, to Rachel, which is Joseph and Benjamin. So when Joseph is born, joy comes to Jacob because God had the womb of, of Rachel shut for a long time. But this is what happens. Are you following me, church? Are you following me, church? Joseph is loved by his father, but already he is having dreams. And in the dreams, the Bible says he saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing down. He's the 12th star. The son, the father, the mother, and the 11 brothers bowing down to him. The Bible says it got the brothers to become jealous. But it says, but the father observed the saying. The father observed the saying. Then the father loved him and he made him a coat of many colors. Now... The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob then makes the, the coat of many colors. What does it mean? This means the mantle. The mantle of covenant is made. The mantle of the Abrahamic covenant is made. And this mantle is the possessor of heaven and earth according to Melchizedek. So this mantle here is a social, economic, and geopolitical mantle. God has started to build a nation called Israel, but he has to give a mantle. So this mantle comes in form of a coat of many colors. That's why his brothers hated him because they had an idea of the interpretation of what that meant. When the brothers were deciding to present evidence to the father that his son was dead, they had to put blood on the mantle. In other words, what was supposed to protect him could not protect him, but that's the evidence that we are bringing that your covenant could not protect your most beloved. The Bible says, Israel, Jacob wept and mourned for the death of his son because he knew what Joseph meant. Now, years later, he is transported to Egypt. And in Egypt, he starts working for Potiphar. Potiphar discovered that he was successful on account of Joseph. Because they removed the physical mantle, but they did not remove the spiritual mantle. I don't care who's bringing you to shame, who's attacking your name and assassinating your character. They can remove human perception, turn it from positive to negative, but they cannot remove your spiritual garment. Potiphar's wife sees beauty because when a man is a mantle, they become beautiful. Beautiful ashes. Oh, I thought we were in the same service. 
Hallelujah. 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 She grabs the mantle and he leaves running and she uses the mantle as evidence again against him. I grabbed his mantle. He's thrown into prison. The day he comes out of prison after interpreting a dream, the first thing he, the king instructs is that take him to bath, but clothe him, give him his mantle. I don't care who your enemies are. Even they too are going to acknowledge there's something about this person. Watch this. The Bible then says he becomes the viceroy of Egypt next to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh says, I could have given you all my kingdom. He makes him the actual leader of Egypt. But he, the mantle is a geopolitical mantle. So in the dreams of Pharaoh, he interprets and begins to condition Egypt. From the dreams of Pharaoh, Joseph was able to design an economic model that later made Egypt a superpower. Egypt became a superpower because of the wisdom of Zafnat Panir, Joseph. It was the mantle of geopolitics. It was the mantle of social economic status among nations so where israel was supposed to be is where egypt was elevated because egypt adopted the man with the mantle ah am i talking to some people here you cannot erase Egypt from the map. But the Bible says they came a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. And that's where problems begin when the man with the mantle is forgotten. But I love what Joseph said. He says, I know one day you are going to depart from this land. And you're going to go to a land that we have been promised. When you go there, do not leave my bones. Carry my bones with you. Because my mantle is in my bones. So when you are leaving this place, if you are going to possess the promised land, make sure if you are going to gain geopolitical traction and dominion over the land of the Canaanites, make sure you bury my bones in the land of Canaan. Am I talking to some people? Joseph is saying, when you leave Egypt, don't leave my mantle here. Take my mantle with you and march across the Red Sea and go and plant my bones in the place of promise. Somebody shout mantle. There are people in this place that God is giving ability, the mantle of social economic dominance. Mm -hmm. God is raising people here with their political jacket. People who stand in rooms and advise presidents. People who walk in rooms and give counsel to business people. People who dominate in social spaces. Uh, writing books uh, and having influence uh, on this generation. Uh, I received this morning uh, the, oh, the mantle of social economic excellence the mantle of social economic and geopolitical influence may God give you territories Joseph had the mantle that could possess a territory today may your gift have its allocation of territory may you walk in this life with the mantle on your shoulder the mantle of economic influence I release the mantle in this place I see a mantle coming down on you your finances are about to change you're about to have an idea that's going to change the trajectory of your life you're about to open a company and a business that's going to make you a millionaire. I'm not saying this to excite you. I'm saying what I'm seeing in the spirits. Pick up this mantle. The mantle that Joseph had. The mantle that gives you economic influence. 
I declare money on your life. I declare economic stability. I declare properties and houses. This morning you are not leaving this place without a mantle that makes you a landlord. Without a mantle that makes you a landowner. Without a mantle that gives you influence. Oh my God, this morning the Lord has sent me to take some territories by reason of the mantle coming on your life. You are taking social territories. You are taking physical land territories. Acres, hectares, farms, buildings, houses. In the name of Jesus, it's your portion this morning. Shout, I have the Joseph mantle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the mantle left Joseph, the mantle of socioeconomic and geopolitics, it shifted and met Israel super in this world. Israel became mighty on account of his mantle. Then we come to the mantle that God introduces next. So here comes Moses after Joseph is forgotten. Oh, we are picking the lost mantle of Joseph, baby. We are picking it up this morning. But after Joseph, God introduces a new mantle. And it's the mantle of priesthood. Now God designs a robe of the priest. The robe of the priest had the, had the urim and the tumim. The robe of the priest had the turbine. The robe of the priest had all the names of Israel on its shoulders. The robe of the priest had the, had the bell and the pomegranate for a pure, clean sound when he gets into the holy place. The priesthood garment or the priesthood mantle is the mantle that allows you to operate in the holy of holies. Ladies and gentlemen, we have right into priesthood. Peter says we are a chosen generation, a peculiar people, a holy nation. We are kings and we are priests. Am I talking to people here? Am I talking to people here? Jesus is our high priest, but we in our own right, we have inherited priesthood. We have a right of fellowship with God. The mantle of priesthood. Is the mantle that causes answered prayer. The mantle of priesthood is a mantle that makes us legitimate and our petitions legal in the presence of God. The mantle of priesthood is what allows to go on our knees and intercede on behalf of others, on behalf of nations and cause ourselves to plant the heavens. The mantle of priesthood is what allows us to move the kingdom through prayer. Am I talking to some people here? When God gives you the mantle of economic influence, when God gives you dominion, don't forget the mantle of the priest, the mantle that allows you to sustain everything by prayer. We are a people of prayer. Prayer is our language. Prayer is our lifestyle. In the morning we pray. In the afternoon we pray. In the evening we pray. We chase devils by prayer. We win victories on our knees by prayer prayer. We go hours in prayer. We shift atmospheres by prayer. We have got that today for an all night prayer because of the mantle of priesthood. I'm here to tell somebody that don't lose your priesthood garment. You are a priest. You are like Aaron. You are like Jesus. He was a priest. Somebody say priesthood. This morning, by the power of Yeshua and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I declare that your life is changing. Your prayer life is being soaked by the mantle of priesthood. You will be able to pray again. Those whose prayer life was dying, the jacket of priesthood is coming. Those who are praying for one hour, 
by reason of this mantle you pray for four hours those who were praying for four hours by reason of this mantle you'll be able to pray in different languages of the spirit that is why on that day in the upper room when the holy ghost came each and every one of them received a language of the spirit they were baptized into their priesthood shout i am a priest shout i am a priest i'm born a priest i serve god i live for god i am in service to god everything i do is for the kingdom of god i am a levitical priest i intercede for israel i'm a melchizedek priest i am an aaronic priest i minister to the lord on behalf of his people may god elevate your spiritual senses may you see visions in prayer may you carry burdens in your spirit to pray for nations to pray for individuals to push things into prayer may god make you like simeon may god make you like anna who for years prayed until jesus showed up we are a chosen generation we are a royal priesthood we are called for to show the excellence of our god we are getting in this place the mantle of priesthood we will pray we will pray the bible says elijah was a man like us but when he got into the priesthood office he would change an atmosphere he would change things when he prayed and nothing happened he prayed again when nothing happened he prayed again when nothing of nothing happened he prayed again look at your neighbor tell them pray again look at the other one say pray again stop murmuring stop complaining stop being a victim stop feeling sorry for yourself put on the garment of priesthood and pray the bible says if anyone you are in trouble let him is anyone broke let him is anyone unemployed let him is anyone unmarried let him is anyone sick let him 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 pray are you hearing what i'm saying i know of a man called david he came back to ziklag the wife was gone two wives were gone children were gone Ziklag was on fire. The Bible says David's men took stones so that they could stone him. But do you know what David did? He looked for the priest. Abiata, where are you? He says, give me the effort. Give me the mantle of a priest. And immediately he said, the Bible says, and David inquired of the Lord. The garment of priesthood allows us to inquire of the Lord. Will Lord tell me what's happening in Zimbabwe? Speak to me about the sick thing. Is it going to work or not? When I put the priestly garment, I can talk to God as a priest. Because David remembered that the garment of priesthood, the mantle of priesthood, God says you shall recover or you shall overtake. When you wear the priestly garment, God comes spirit. I declare answer to your prayers. Ah, your spirit is wearing a new garment. The garment of priesthood. The garment of prayer. The garment of intercession. The garment of praying without ceasing. I will pray, I will pray. I will pray, oh, I will pray. I will keep praying, I will keep praying. 
I don't care what happens. I will still remain in. Don't be discouraged by the vicissitudes of life. Don't be discouraged by people. Don't be discouraged by devils. They just want you to remove your garment of prayer. Let them take anything from you, but not your garment of priesthood. Let them take a job from you, but not prayer. Let them take a husband from you, but not prayer. Let them take a wife from you, but not prayer. Let them go sickness in your body, but not prayer. Devil, you can touch anything about me, but not my priesthood garment. I will pray when it's good. I will pray when it's terrible. I'll pray when I'm feeling good. I'll pray when I'm not comfortable. I'll pray healthy. I'll pray when I'm sick. But I will not shut my mouth. I will always call on God. Zabadaba so dederebeha. Horas talamandes kebrela basanda. And then go after the garment of priesthood. Through Aaron and his sons, the garment of priesthood is forgotten. And later on, God raises Samuel. Tell me about Samuel. Can I tell you something about Samuel? When Samuel was born, he was born because the mother was praying. And when she was praying, the priest, she lost her voice. And when she lost her voice, the priest thought she was drunk. He came to her and says, woman, whatever you are asking for is granted. Do you know what happened? The priest is a voice of prayer. So God took the voice of prayer from the woman and put it in a womb. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. That is why when priest Zechariah was serving in the temple, and God says you shall have a son called John, he took his voice. The voice of the priest was taken and placed in the womb. That's why Jesus says, what did you go out there to see? Most assuredly, a voice crying in the wilderness. Why was a voice crying in the wilderness? It was once in the mouth of a priest. It was taken in the womb of Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth. And one day it spoke. Whenever you pray, your prayers become what you give birth to. Prayer is a voice. That's why the Bible says, and God heard the voice of their prayer. Uh -uh, uh -uh. The Bible does not say God heard their prayer. God heard the voice of their prayer. So God took this boy, placed him in his mother's womb. Now the priest began to give birth to a king. Now watch this. The Bible says every year, every year, everybody say every year. The mother, the mother would sew a mantle for the boy. And would bring him to the temple with a new mantle every year. And on the 12th year, after making the mantle at 12 years, she leaves him in the house of God with Eli. But that was the mantle of kingship. Now, watch what happens after that. The Bible says, Saul was meant to become king. When Samuel anointed him, what did he give to him? He gave him a robe. Now, when Samuel, when Saul had a robe that he had from Samuel, do you know what he did with that mantle? When he got into the camp of prophets, he began to prophesy. Now, look at what happens. Who is supposed to take over from Saul? Jonathan. Jonathan, one day, he takes his mantle and his armor and he puts it on David. That's the day that David became king. Ah, you're not following. Now, this is David's mistake. When Saul was fighting David, David looks for Saul and he cuts the corner of his, of his garment. When he cuts the corner of his garment, he shows him and says, I could have killed you, but I decided not to do so. 
Nothing was done about it, but he touched the wrong place. He touched the mantle. He didn't know that he is, this is what he is inheriting. So on the day that he transferred the mantle to Solomon, everything was fine. But on the day that Solomon had to transfer the mantle to his son, the kingdom was divided into two. The same way he cut the garment is the same way his kingdom was split into two. That's the garment of priesthood. That's the garment of kingship. Are you listening to what I'm saying here, church? This is the garment of kingship and authority. I've already said we are a chosen generation, a royal. We are royalty. We are kings in our own right. Anywhere. We are kings wherever we go. A king rules by his mouth. That's why we have death and life in the power of the tongue. That's why what we speak is what comes to pass. That's why we are careful with words. Because we are kings. Our word is law. The word of a king is law. That's why you must be disciplined with what you say. Because in the realm of the spirit, you didn't just say, you made a decree. My God, you don't need to say, I decree and declare. You're already a king. You're already declaring and declaring. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? The mantle of kingship. The mantle of kingship. Kingship is a mantle that comes on you. Kingship is a mantle. That's why when Jesus was asked, are you the king? Huh? He said, yes, I am. But at one point when he was taken to Herod, do you know what Herod did? He removed his mantle and he put it on Jesus. And when they crucified him, they wrote on the cross, king of the Jews. Wasn't that true? Kings. We are kings. We are kings. We walk with authority. When we get into places, kings have arrived. Ah, you look like you don't even believe what I'm saying. Then you don't even know the God that you are serving. The Bible says, those who know their God shall do. Do you know what he said about you? You are a royal priesthood. A chosen generation. The mantle of kingship. Somebody say the mantle of kingship. Somebody say the mantle of kingship. The next one is the prophetic mantle. The prophetic mantle. The prophetic mantle. And this one, ladies and gentlemen, is key because the prophetic is diverse than ministering to people that we do. We love that we do it, but the prophetic dimension is broader than that. Prophecy is not just the communication of the word of the Lord to a person, but prophecy is the enforcing of the will of God in a place. Prophets do not just foretell events, but they foretell events. They have the ability to create what is not there. This is the mantle of creativity. So don't say because we are saying prophetic, then you say it has nothing to do with me. I have no desire to minister to anyone. No, you need a prophetic mantle. You need it. You need it. Are you listening to me, church? How do we know of the mantle? Elijah and Elisha. What happened there? The Bible says Elijah. Oh my God, am I talking to some people here? Am I talking to some people here? Am I talking to some people here? God says go and anoint Elisha in your stead or in your place or in your office. But when he meets Elisha, Elijah slaps Elisha with a mantle. Nothing was said to Elisha. Elisha knew what it meant. Because a man who's called for a mantle knows when the mantle strikes him. Fourteen years he saves Elijah. Then nothing is said. When Elijah is about to go, he said, remain here, I'm going. The sons of the prophet says, do you know that your master is going? And he says, I don't care. I'm going to follow him wherever he goes. Elijah says, you can stay here. Elisha says, I'm not going to remain here. I'm going to follow you wherever you are going. When you are after a mantle, you will follow it relentlessly. 
I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Until I have the mantle, I'm not going to let you go. Are you seeing what's happening here? Are you seeing what's happening here, church? I'm about to conclude. Wake somebody up. Shake them and say, no, 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 no. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's about to get good in a moment. Are you following church? Are you following church? Are you following church? Tell them, good morning. Good morning, Elisha. Amen. The Bible says they came to the Jordan River and Elijah struck the Jordan River and they walked on foot and went across in the view of the sons of the prophet. But Elijah heard Elijah saying to him, if you see me going, you have it. If you don't see me, tough luck. Tough luck? After 14 years? After so many years, I left my profession. I left everything that I was doing. Even the sound of this is Elijah who poured, Elijah who poured water on the hands of Elijah. He paid the price for that mantle. I love what Elijah was doing. He wasn't going anywhere. He's asked, what can I do for you? He says, I want a double portion of your spirit. Double portion of your spirit doesn't mean God is going to double the spirit of Elijah times two on Elijah. Double portion refers to the inheritance of the firstborn child. The firstborn child always had their portion times two and everybody else gets one, one, one. So if you are a father of four children and your wealth is ten, uh, if you're a father of I don't know now how to do the math. Oh my God, it's escaping me. Huh? If you're a father of five, and you have five, the first and the second portion belongs to the firstborn, and everybody else shares the remaining. So what Elisha is saying to Elijah is that I am I'm, I'm claiming the inheritance of your mantle. Elijah says to Elisha, if you see me going, then you have it. My God, his eyes were wide open. The man wasn't even blinking. <laughs> the chariots of fire came. The whirlwind came. Now watch this. What allowed them to get it is because others saw a whirlwind, but he saw something different. When he was taught, if you see me going, he wasn't talking about his human form. He was talking, if you recognize my rank in the spirit, you shall have it. Since you want the inheritance of the firstborn, I'm going to listen to what you call me when I'm going. So when he started going, others saw a whirlwind. He saw chariots of fire. Eria waenda, waenda, nengoro yemoto. And it got Eria waita say, waenda, munu wana gaona ngoro yemoto, wanga ita gaenda ni champupuri. But this man is the one that says, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. He identified the angels, what those angels were, and immediately the court began to fall. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here? The Bible says, Elisha, when he saw the coat falling to the ground, he picked up the mantle of Elijah. Mm -hmm. Then he went to the Jordan River and he smote it. It says, where is the God of Elijah? Now this is what God does. Come on, help me now. The first miracle of Elisha was the last miracle of Elijah. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. This is what happens when someone picks up a mantle. There are no mantles needed in heaven. Can I repeat what I just said? There are no mantles needed in heaven. When you die, the mantle remains here. But look at what 
happens. Elisha doubles the ministry of Elijah. But this is where the problem is. The mantle became lost. Because nobody took over from Elisha as he did to Elijah. Now this is what God did. The Bible says Elijah is buried. Elisha is buried six feet under the ground. Then one day a war breaks out. One dead man is carried. He becomes too heavy. They throw him in a grave. As they were running, they saw him coming from behind. Then they realized, no, there was a lost mantle that went with the man in the grave. Oh my God, oh my God. People die, but mantles don't die. The Bible says the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. There are men of God in the cloud of witnesses. Great men of faith who subdued kingdoms, who reigned on the earth. Can I tell you something? They may be in heaven, but their mantles are down here. And God is saying, who's ready to pick up the mantle? Who is ready to take over from Elijah? Who is ready to take over from Apostle Paul, from Apostle Peter, silver and gold, have I none? But by what I have, rise up are you hearing what I'm saying where are the Joseph of Aramathias of our generation men so wealthy that they can take care of the body of Christ am I talking to some people this morning pick up your mantle do like what Elisha did raise down to the ground and grab the mantle tonight the lord told me that this morning mantles have fallen mantles have been on the ground when i walked into this room i saw an economic mantle i saw a mantle for science and technology I saw a mantle for church planting and increase. I saw a mantle for businesses, retail and service delivery. I saw a mantle. Am I talking to some people? Can I tell you what I'm seeing? Before I do so, are you sure you're going to pick up the mantle? Are you sure you're going to pick up the mantle? Are you sure you're going to pick up the mantle? A mantle is a covering. A mantle is supernatural authority. A mantle is your armor. A mantle is capacity. It's a room. A mantle is an atmosphere. A climate shifting power in your spirit. A mantle is your immunity. The devil can't touch you when there's a mantle on your life. Am I talking to some people in this place? Do I have people this morning who are believing God for something? I didn't come to NOG to go home the same. I'm leaving this place with my mantle. Oh God, these are the days of Elijah. These are the days of Elisha. These are the days of Daniel. These are the days of the apostles. These are the days of Agabus the prophet. These are the days. These are the days of the move of God. Ladies and gentlemen, revival has come. But who is speaking up the mantle of Mbuya Murape? Who is speaking up the mantle of Ezekiel Guti? Who is speaking up the mantle of Gwanzura? Who is speaking up the mantle of Abednego Chitauro? Who is speaking up the mantles of those that were used by God? Who have departed from thence? 
we cannot as a church produce just one billionaire who this morning is picking up the mantle of strife Masiwa. I don't care he's alive mantles are mantles I can get it if I want it am I talking to some people here 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 there is a mantle coming in your spirit ministry mantles the mantle of healing and deliverance the mantle of the prophetic the mantle of the apostolic the mantle of evangelism the mantle of signs and wonders the mantle of healing the mantle the mantle of building for god come on somebody come on somebody who is hungry this morning for a mantle in this place you cannot afford to come into this world and die without fulfillment i'm gonna fulfill my purpose i'm gonna be who god called me to be i'm gonna go where god called me to go do you want it this morning it's a question to you do you want it this morning do you want what belongs to you do you want what's available today do you want your mantle this morning? I want you to do like this. Say, I'm picking up my mantle. I can say, I'm picking up my mantle. When I leave this room, I live with my mantle. When I leave this room, I live with my mantle. I shall never be the same again. Come on, begin to pray. Ha! 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 It's transferable. It's transferable. Sharila ato pros inta brokinas velinto ona masene bainas reliko otoina atoshina amara mekrenas ita proni edeina lefunsa minata anero kopanga rikude betsianda akto belera sejo jeruna axele mai vela akresi barate preno panatina akso bai jarile exele menda prenito opara le masse prehenta bahaya. Everyone stand up in God's presence. I want us to pray. God has given us so many opportunities for life transformation. But in so many seasons we've missed it. But not tonight. Say devil not today. I said, say devil not, today. devil, not today. When you leave this place, <laughs> when you leave this place, you Pane wana rupa varufa na uva pana pawashi bata ma phone calls. Kunzu kwa ita basara kuguno. Pane wano varufa na uchata pana. Ah, una undinswa, una undinswa, una undinswa, una undinswa, una undinswa. Dada una undinswa, adada una undinswa. Pane wano vaku sumuswa na muari. Mangwana ni anasi. 
I would, I will, I will go with my, I will go with my mantle. Chamari, usate zirenin. Inda kacho tuchuona in the spirit. Inda kato nonga yangu mantle. Kuronga msaka nono kuronga rewe. Kutinyasha zanda pindo sema postura yu upi yu zako. Ndwa unzo zwa naga. Eh eh. So, without una mat, without una mat, go ready to wear one. Without una mat, go ready to wear one. 